So, do you know anyone, have you ever met like a person that is very proud of their humility? Like, it's kind of an ironic thing. We've, like, we've all seen some of these people before, they kind of just like walk around boasting about how humble they are. Or maybe not even how humble they are, but like, just like how weak they are. And like, they're really, they, they might try to sound in their words like, you know, I'm really humble, but they're constantly talking about it. it's me. I'm, I'm, I'm so humble, or I'm really weak. I'm not, not good at this. And really, they're just bringing all the attention to themselves. They're, they're just, they're boasting about themselves in a different way. But have you ever met a person like that? It's just, they really just like, they love to boast about their humility and their weakness and what they're not good at. And, you know, you don't even, don't even want to go by them. If maybe, maybe you got a new outfit and you walk up by them and they're the person that's saying to you, oh, well, I, I wish I had the money for that. I don't. And, you know, that kind of person. They're always kind of, a, kind of a Debbie Downer. They're always talking bad about themselves, this, that, and the other. We all know some people like that. And I, just kind of, I just kind of hate those people. <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's strong. That's strong. All right. All right. Don't you, don't you just have a hard time not hating those people sometimes? <laughs> um, you know, I say, so I've got a story of that. Uh, I had a friend once back in elementary school, and uh, I was friends with this girl named Rachel. Not, not you. But uh, I was, uh, me and Rachel decided to have a foot race. And um, I don't really do races that often, but we decided that we were going to do a race. We wanted to see who was faster. There was probably a little bit of boasting going on before that. I imagine we were bragging a little bit. But um, we decide we're going to do this race. So we get ready. And we get in our places. We're ready. We're at the starting line. We're market set, go. I'm running just like as fast as I've ever run before for what feels like a mile. It's probably like three yards, but um, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going at it. I know I got, I got to win this. I've been talking smack. I got to win this race. And there, I get through the finish line. I beat Rachel. I'm like pumped about it. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was probably boasting a little bit. You don't need to clap for that. Um, and uh, so I get through this race, and uh, then Rachel comes across the line in the end. And uh, you know, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was probably a little bit bragging. And uh, then she, she looks at me and she says, well, you know, Ben, the first will be last and the last will be first. And then she walks off. <laughs> don't, don't you kind of hate those people sometimes? Um, all right, so I had to share that story to get us started. Uh, but tonight we're continuing our series on boast. And uh, over this series, we started off by talking about why we boast in Jesus. We've established that Jesus is the only one that is worthy of our boast. None of our own accomplishments, none of the things that we do, none of that is worthy of our boast. It is only Jesus. And then we continued it last week by saying that we read some words from Paul, really strong words, where he was saying that everything else is garbage compared to knowing Jesus personally. It was an incredible week last week. Emma made the decision to be baptized, to give her life to that. Awesome time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been great learning about how to boast in Jesus. But now we're going to start, so we've established he's the only one worthy of our boast. But how, how do we actually do that? That's what we're going to start to look at tonight. And we're going to look at this from a story in Paul's life. The Apostle Paul that uh, is out of the book of 2 Corinthians. Now, 2 Corinthians, if you don't know much about uh, Corinthians, Cor um, Corinthians is a letter written to a church that Paul planted. It was a church in the town of the city of Corinth. And um, this is one of the letters that Paul wrote to this church in Corinth. And uh, in this letter, one of the main things that Paul is addressing is that the people in this church have really been kind of like down talking Paul. They've been kind of dissing Paul. You see, there's been these other leaders who have come into the church that uh, you can actually read about this in 2 Corinthians 10 and 11, but these other church leaders have come in there and they're kind of boasting about themselves. Paul sarcastically calls them super apostles. And uh, they're kind of coming in there and they're talking all about themselves and maybe how great they are. I don't know exactly what they said, but. That's the way it seems in the context of what Paul says. And uh, so Paul is kind of writing to them and sort of defending to some extent that he 
like some of his credentials. And uh, he goes through that in chapter 11 and talks about uh, a lot of the accomplishments that he's had in his faith. And he goes on to say that if I chose to boast, I'd be no fool in doing so. I mean, if anyone, if anyone can boast about their accomplishments, wouldn't it be the Apostle Paul? I mean, like, he wrote so much of the New Testament. It would be Paul. He says, if he chose to boast, he'd be no fool in doing so, but he chooses not to. Because why? Well, what we learned last week, Paul says everything else is garbage compared to knowing Jesus, even his own accomplishments. So he chooses only to boast in Jesus. So that's the context of chapter 11. And now our message is going to take place out of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. If you brought your Bible or you've got the Version app, I would strongly encourage you to turn to that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We've got some in the back if you need that. Um, so we pick up in 2 Corinthians 12, and it starts, what, we're going to start in verse 8 in just a couple minutes. But the chapter starts off with Paul telling us about this supernatural revelation that he's received from God. And it's, it's crazy. Like, seriously, read this chapter like, on your own. Go home and read this. But it's crazy. Like, Paul talks about he had this vision from God. He even says he doesn't know if he was in body or out of body. He was called up to heaven. He saw things he can't even put into words. Like, crazy. This is in the Bible. This is awesome. Um, so Paul talks about this amazing revelation. And he goes on to say that if I wanted to boast, I surely could do it. I'd be no fool in doing so. I'm telling the truth. But once again... He chooses not to, because if he did that, it put the spotlight on him rather than on Jesus. But you see, these things, everything that Paul had been through, everything that Paul's done for the faith, these revelations, there's something that could cause a person to boast, right? I mean, if you're Paul, you may have felt this tension before that sometimes there's just that feeling that, you know, I've, I've done a lot for God. I'm pretty good. I've done a lot. God really loves me. I feel pretty good about myself. I don't know, maybe, maybe Paul had felt that before. Maybe that had been a temptation before. But it goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7, it says that he, that Paul was given a thorn in his flesh to keep him from becoming proud. Now, when you're reading the context of this, it's, it's not talking about a physical thorn. He didn't walk through a rose bush or anything. Um, this <laughs> is this is something it's something in his life that is reminding Paul that I'm not that great and we don't know what it is for years Bible scholars have theorized and come up with ideas about it no one knows exactly what it is so we're not going to try to figure out what that was in Paul's life but it was something that reminded Paul that he wasn't all that great because it says the purpose behind it is it kept him from becoming so it reminded him that he was weak. And so maybe, maybe for Paul, maybe it was a sin. Maybe it was some sort of reoccurring sin in his life. Maybe for Paul, maybe it was a physical weakness of some sort. Something that he didn't like about his, his body or something of that nature. It could be a feeling of loneliness or inadequacy. We don't know what it was. We had this thorn, something that kept him from becoming proud. We can understand that, right? Don't you have a thorn? I do. There's something in my life that reminds me that I'm not all that. You may not tell people about that. You might walk around as if you don't have it, like you have everything together, but you and I both know there's something in your life that when you're alone, that you remember at times or reminds you that I'm not really that great. I'm, I'm not perfect. And I don't know what it was for Paul. We can all imagine something in your life that, that might be, what that might look like. So this brings us to our passage. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8. So Paul, this is his work. He's going to Jesus. And he says here in verse 8, three different times I asked the Lord to take it away. It, it being the thorn. Three different times I asked the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, he said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Or, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. My grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. So 
So for whatever reason, Paul's asking for God to take this away, but he chooses not to because somehow God's power is going to be seen in Paul's weakness. And reminding him that he's not, he's not all that. He is weak. So I think someone in this room might need to hear this word. Maybe, maybe you have struggled with this before. Maybe you have a thorn that you've been asking God to remove and he hasn't and you don't understand and maybe these are the same words that Jesus would want you to hear that his grace is all you need that his power is made best in your weakness so how does Paul reply to this? well in Um, second half of verse 9 it says, So, now I am glad to boast about my weakness. It's Paul's word. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So why does Paul boast about his weakness? In the text there, he says, so that the power of Christ can work through him. Because if Paul's walking around boasting in his own strength, you know, he's, he's running around boasting in his own strength, and how's God getting the glory in his life? So, you know, but does this mean, does this mean, he talked about boasting his weakness, does this mean that Paul lived a weak life? Of course not. Paul has the power of the Holy Spirit living in him. So obviously that's the opposite of weakness. But he acknowledged the fact that it wasn't him. That it was all God. That it was all God's power working in his life, not by his own strength. That it was all God. Paul, cho Paul chose to lay down everything that made him great in order to embrace the things that made him weak so that God's power could be seen in his life. Paul chose to lay down everything that made him great in order to embrace the things that made him weak so that God's power could be seen in his life. So what weakness do you need to embrace? That you, you know, you've never, never really thought about that before, like embracing your weakness we all know we're, we're imperfect. We know that we have a weakness. You have a thorn. But maybe what weakness in your life might you need to embrace? But what did this look like for Paul? What, what did this practically look like in Paul's life? How did he boast in his weakness? Well, let me start by saying what it didn't look like. It didn't look like the guy we talked about in the beginning that walks around talking about how weak I am. Because then that guy's just boasting himself again. He's not boasting in God. He's just boasting himself but just that he's weak. Uh, that's not what that looked like. This is how Jesus talks about this. And Jesus talks about this in Mark chapter 10, verse 35. In, in, in this passage, the disciples have been having an argument about who was the greatest among them. They start arguing, and they're, they're wondering who's the greatest, and Jesus overhears this argument, so he calls his disciples aside, and he, he decides to sit them down, and he wants to address this. And this is what he says in 10.35, that he, this is being Jesus, sat down and called the 12 disciples over to him and said, whoever wants to be first must take the last place and be the servant of everyone. I think that's what it looks like for us to boast in our weakness. It's living the life of a servant, because it is a servant. A servant generally is not someone that is really revered. He's not the person that's standing up on the pedal stool. He's not the person that's really boasting. He's behind the scenes just working to serve his master. And I think, I think that's the life that Paul lived. That's what we see in his life, that he chooses not to boast in his accomplishments, but only boast in Jesus. 
And we see Paul serves and loves so many people. He does so much. You, you look at the context of everything that Paul's talked about. He's always talking about love. I think that's what we see in Paul's life, that he, he made himself a servant to everyone. Jesus says you, Jesus turns things upside down in the way of the world looks at it when we might we look at climbing the ladder and getting higher and climbing that ladder of success but jesus says no 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 if you want to be first you be last you make yourself the servant and i believe that's how jesus would tell us to boast in our own in our weaknesses how do we do this how do we boast in our weakness summarize it first we embrace the fact that we're weak on our own. That in our own strength, we are weak. And, and we, we acknowledge that, we embrace that, that the only power that is in our life, it's because of God. And second, we take the attitude of a servant. We serve life, just walking around complaining, or this, that, or the other, being sad about yourself. Of course not. We have the Holy Spirit living in us, and that is power. We have the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's not by our own strength, because we're not great in and of ourselves. We're not great by ourselves. It is all Jesus. It's all his power. So we need to acknowledge that we are are weak. And then, when we acknowledge that we're weak, any power that's seen in our lives, it all goes to Jesus. Because if you're walking around boasting about, oh, I'm so great, I'm so great, I'm so great, then, then all the power, then, then everything is pointed at you. Everyone's looking at you. But instead, you acknowledge that I am weak. It's not me. And then when power is seen in your life, because if you're a follower of Jesus, that's going to be seen. If you've given your life to him, if you've been baptized, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you, that power is going to be seen. And then when that power is seen, where does it all go? It's all Jesus. It magnifies his power. Your weakness magnifies Christ's. 